All right. Got the belly pan uh, infill work done. Obviously, formers and stringers too. And uh, so now it's time to ladle on the paste. So for this first round, I'm going to stay away from the landing gear doors. And we're just going to ladle it up like so. And then I'll come back and tape these off here. The hinges, tape them off and then get in there and kind of work some of it into that area as well. And I want it a little bit wet. I'm not going to I'm not going to go straight out of the bin here. I'm going to actually soften this up a little bit, get a little toothpaste -y so it gets in down into these cracks. The reason I'm doing this, usually I'll do a little bit of sanding first, take the rough edges off, but in this case um, I don't want to do that. I want to try and keep the profile of the belly pan as high as I can. If I sand into it first, you know, there's reduction with that, and I don't, I don't want that reduction. I don't want any of the reduction I do to be anything but productive smoothing, not just reduction for its own sake to take edges off. Some of those edges, you know, it might be good that they're high rather than low, just to kind of maintain that overall profile. I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm probably just superfluous it's not really a big deal it's just something i've you know half the battle in these things is psychological of what you think is going to work or what you what practices you decide on to go with are just that they're just it's just a mental exercise i think it'll work and be helpful so that's why i'm going to do it whether it is or not you know that's uh that's above my pay grade I'm just going to do it this way because it, it feels right to me. Keep this stuff off of the areas that are already pretty smooth and polished. Now that's a problem we're going to run into as well, is when I start sanding into this belly pan, I've got to be very careful around the areas that are already, you know, smooth. I am going to be digging into that a little bit, and then, you know, we'll be back to square one for within about a half inch, three quarters of an inch here as far as getting it back to paintable but you know it is what it is you gotta you know the belly pan has to be smoothed and I can't just leave it rough here and there because I don't want to do any rework I don't want to resand that area I'm gonna have to do it so all right so let's get this stuff worked in Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm working it in. That, that is what we're doing. We're, we're getting there. Uh, so there's some areas here. The way the parts went on and the fact that I might have gotten this rear former over to one side, you know, that way a little bit too far. It needed to be more this way. So I'm going to have to fill out this bubble on this side, the bow on the thing. I'll have to do that a little bit creatively with the filler more than as I would have liked with just, you know, the, the parts handling all that shaping for me. I'm going to have to do a little extra shaping with this stuff. That's all right, though. We've done that before. Not, not, not a lot, but... It comes up. Oh, see, I'm getting in here. It's all right. It's not enough to do anything. I should probably have taped it before I did this, but I didn't. Yeah, did I? No, it's pretty obvious I didn't. All right. So we're going to need a smooth transition here. Uh, and here means around the back edge of this forward vent, exhaust porting, intercooler exhaust is what this one is. Yeah, I read a book. Let's get this stuff in here. 
So one of the other uh, things that is going to transpire at some point is that there is an underwing um, wing fairing here, just as there is above. I just not going to make that whole thing right now, but I can definitely put in the foundation for it there, which is what I just did. If you're wondering why I built that up so much, that's why. She's going to get more built than that. All right, so that's about as close as I want to get without having the tape there. And then uh, get in here and fairing this edge too. And then spackle is perfect for this. This is, to me, this is what it's made for. I know, you know, drywall, sure, but you know, for me, this stuff is just absolutely perfect for this. And it works on the, you know, it works on the plastic kits too. It's not crumbly and chalky the way it used to be. This stuff has some adherent qualities to it. And with just a, a light brushing of the, uh, the sealer that I use, that uh, sand and seal, this stuff, after it dries and you sand it and you got it where you want it, you just even on a plastic kit, you just take a, a nice, you know, brush similar to this and just layer on some of that, just one coat of it. And it acts like a hardener for this stuff. And uh, I recommend trying that. Get the shrink free spackle paste, this stuff. You buy in a bucket like this for like 10 bucks or whatever. Shrink free spackling. Sherwood Williams. Anyway, that stuff, this stuff, what I'm putting on right now, even on plastic kits, works amazing. And I, I do the same thing with the sand and seal over it here. When this is when I sand it and dry and it's dry, and it's shaped how I want it to be shaped, I come over the top with that stuff, and it and it really um, enhances the spackle product and the, and the the, the um, surfacing the surface that you get with it. I tried a lot of other stuff. I tried gesso or gesso or whatever this stuff is. It's a canvas, a white kind of a canvas prep that painters use before they start throwing color on canvas. And it balances the canvas and it gives it a nice off-white base coat for all the colors to pop out of. But it, it smooths the canvas. And on the channels or the forums that I go to somebody was saying well you know I use it for painting and so I thought I'd try it here and it worked but it tends to leave a bit of a heavy brush stroke no matter what you do I find that that brush those brush strokes are persistent and really hard to uh, sand out and with the sand and sealer with the base coat like that you don't want something that you need to be concerned about as a surfacing post that you something you have to surface after the fact you, that's part of what that stuff's job is, is surfacing so you don't it's like doing having to do it again because of the product you use to do the job so that's not right so I stopped using the gesso you know it does it did something it helped but it's not like this stuff and certainly not at all like the sand and seal which is just a beautiful invention for this for this kind of work. Okay, so you see how I'm you know frosting the cake here. Let me get this on here. How I change the consistency from this heavy paste to it's more like a toothpaste. This is the first application, as you can see clearly, that I'm putting on over the um, over the wood 
the, the infill. And I don't usually wet it for the first application, but I wanted this stuff to really get in. And, uh, and I wanted to be able to control some of the buildup along this edge and the back edge, as well as along the sides here where the fairings are going to eventually be. So if some of this gets onto my hinge here, it's not a problem. Just spackle. I'll be able to break it free without damaging the part. It's the glue you got to watch out for, obviously, and keep the glue out of there. And uh, these hinges are such that I can pop them, the doors off, just by slicing underneath these capture, uh, these lengths of tubing here I use to capture the the rods. So I can just slice this one off, and the whole thing will slide back out of the front one, and away we go. So if it comes down to it and it looks like it's going to be too hard to sand and finish, I mean, I may, I may just pull them, pull them out of there anyway, just because it's not a pain in the ass. But I thought I'd try it this way first because you know I'm a shortcut guy. You know, I'm, and also the shortcut turns into a long cut very, very frequently. But I never learned that lesson, so we're doing it again. Taking the Taking the shortcut that might end up long. You see, I want to build up that edge. You know, it does two things. It gives me something to sand on before I get down into this stuff. If it's built up out here, the sand, the sanding block won't penetrate down onto my model. And uh, it also helps to ensure a smooth transition from the belly pan onto the fuselage there. So I'm trying to know, I'm just going around and picking up all these dry spots. Yeah, you can maybe see on the camera. I don't want any dry spots, I want filler everywhere. Um, spackle, I mean. Oops. So you know, we want to get it off of the uh, areas that don't. I don't want to be sanding on unnecessarily. And uh, there you can see that happening. You see the difference between this is the absolute dry application. This is without any water at all. This last little ladling here. You see the difference in the way it goes on. That's why I like to wet it first. Let me, uh, let me do this. Just get the spatula wet. And come back over the top. Keep it out of that joint, or at least thin it out in there. Yeah, I'm trying to do too much. We'll come back after I tape it off and get in there and do that. All right, so we'll start with this. It's going to take about four or five hours to dry, even longer maybe, on a day like this. We're supposed to get rain a little later. So on dry, dry days, low humidity, four or five hours, it's ready to sand usually. Uh, more humid days, six to eight hours. What you want to do is um, you check it with a real fine grit. I mean, not a real fine, like a 180 grit, <coughs> and just sand lightly. And then, if you see any tearing of the uh, spackle, it starts to rip instead of sand. You got to stop. You know, it's not ready. Uh, but if you get that nice, dry, raspy sound, and it's just powder coming off, then you, you know it's good to go. All right, so we're gonna let this dry. I got a little more work to do on this side, actually. Just rolling up the sidewalk a little too soon there. So I'll finish this here, and, and then I'll shut the camera off if I have enough.
space for that one. Let's see. That's a little too wet, actually. But that's all right. We'll mix it in here and here and here and there. Oh yeah, that's good. Get in there. I'm trying to, I'm trying to fill you. All your grooves. Starting to rain outside. Come here, slapping on the roof. It's a nice sound when you're in, indoors. You know, in a workshop or something, you get that rain sound. I like it. No matter what you're working on. Just love that sound. All right. So I've wetted the stuff, which means it will take a bit longer than it would if it were just using it out of the container. So with the weather we're having six, eight, maybe nine hours later, I'll be able to sand this. All right, not going to make you watch it dry, though. There you go. Have a great day. Thanks.